They said, let's make the biggest and the baddest racetrack in the world, and they did it here. 2.66 miles, 33 degrees making. Three wide, four wide, coming out of turn four and into the tri-oval. We will see laps run this race well upwards of 190 miles an hour when these cars get hooked together. They're moving back and forth. Shocking for position as they go down the back straight. That was incredible. As they spread out once again, four wide. This looks a little bit ominous right here. Problems, a hard hit. Those kids put their helmets on and back away from the TV because it's going to be that wild. It's going to be a great show. Nothing is predictable when you come to Talladega Super Speedway. The ARCA Racing Series presented by Menards about to go 94 laps for the ARCA Racing Series 250 from Talladega Super Speedway on speed. 16 hours ago when we were supposed to start this race, there were tornado warnings in the area. Today, 53 degrees, sunny, and a little bit breezy, 14 to 18 mile per hour winds. One race into the season, take a look at our point standings. Bobby Gerhardt, so impressive on super speedways. Got his seventh win at Daytona, his eighth career win. He sits atop the point standings. Chris Buescher, Matt Merrill, Ty Dillon, and Joey Licata rounding out your top five. Now let's go trackside to Ray Dunlap. Well, thank you, Rick. I'm down on the grid, and when you see the car right here, Tom Hessert's number 52 lines up third. But if you look at the qualifying results, you would think that this is where the 12 car should be. Mary Eve Defoe actually qualified third on Thursday afternoon, but she had an illegal intake manifold. So she'll go all the way to the tail of the field and try to work her way forward. If she gets up here, she'll have to contend with this guy, Ty Dillon, who's on the Ansel a uh, pole award presented by Menards. Congratulations, it's your third pole in ARCA. Tell me about what you learned at Daytona that can help you keep this 41 car up front today. I think the biggest thing is going to be having to stay on the bottom. Um, we came off the bottom too early at Daytona, lost a lot of spots, and uh, kind of put us in a couple bad spots. And uh, the car is still fast enough. We, we came out with 11th place finish. So definitely not going to come off the bottom today and uh, see how many laps we can lead. All right, be interesting to see if he can keep this one on the bottom and at the front. Now let's check in with my broadcast partner, Bob Dillner. On the front row is the same front row as Daytona Ray. Both Ty Dillon and Kyle Fowler, the Venerini Motorsports cars, looking pretty good. Kyle Fowler on the outside of the front row. Scott Legacy in a Venerini Motorsports car. The last time you were in it, you were in victory lane back in 2008. But this came together just about four days ago. Why don't you tell me about that conversation with Billy Venturini? Really, it was a lot of the same conversation we had back for, before the Chicago deal. It was uh, Billy called, and, and I had one question for him, Billy, can we win? And he said, yep. So it was a very simple answer from me. We'll go do it. So um, I'm excited. Really good race car. Um, Venturini Motorsports in their group is, is just great. We've got Lauren Bryant, country singer on the, star, on the hood today. So it's, uh, it should be a fun day for us. Scott Legacy looking for victory lane here. The other Venturini Motorsports car lines up 11th with Hal Martin today, guys. Thanks, Bob. Welcome, everyone. Rick Allen, Phil Parsons with you for this early morning edition of ARCA Racing. Now, Phil, we heard a couple names early that you always hear when you come to Super Speedways. Bobby Gerhardt and Venerini Motorsports. Yeah, they're awfully strong here. Uh, as you mentioned, Bobby Gerhardt, seven wins at Daytona, which is a sister track to this, and probably more so now than ever with a new paving job in Daytona. And you have Frank Kimmel. Between Gerhardt and Kimmel, 43 starts here at Talladega. But you have a lot of young guys here with, with no starts or very few starts talk about Ty Dillon. This is his first ever start here. Sat in a pole, sat in a pole at Daytona. How about young Brandon McReynolds making a start here at Talladega in the number four? Been very impressive here. Also ran here last year, so he has a little bit of experience. So it's a re real nice mix between the young, inexperienced drivers like a Ty Dillon and Brandon McReynolds and the experienced guys like Kimball and Gerhardt. But we had a teenager, Dakota Armstrong, who's in this field, won this race last year. So there's plenty of room here for inexperienced and experienced, and they will be all over this racetrack three and four wide. And there is nothing that is predictable when you come to Talladega Super Speedway. Stay with us when we come back. The green flag will fly. It's the ARCA Racing Series 250 from Talladega Super Speedway. The 2011 ARCA racing season kicked off two months ago at Daytona International Speedway. This was the first stock car race to be run on the newly repaved surface. Leading the field to green was rookie Ty Dillon. On his very first race in ARCA, he won the pole and finished second. His next two starts, he went to victory lane. Kyle Fowler in one of those Billy Venturini cars on the outside of the front row. 
We have two 18-year-olds on the front row making their first start ever at Daytona. When Brett Hudson cut a tire on lap five, six-time Daytona winner Bobby Gerhardt took advantage of the caution. They just came into the pits to put fuel in that car. That may be their one and only pit stop. Tom Hessert spun on lap 20, bringing the rest of the field to pit road. Gerhardt stayed out and took over the lead. It wasn't until under 20 laps to go that a cut tire led to the big one. Oh, Got a tire down. Looks Got like a the tire, tire goes down. down. Also, the 25. Peter Reckon behind you. 55 cut a tire. That's what the smoke was. 25 went with him. Yellow is out. Big mess over there. Big mess. He knows right there. You hear the tire go. He knows he's in trouble, and here comes the rest of the gang piling in. All the caution laps allowed Gerhardt to conserve fuel for the final laps. So here comes Busher with some momentum. Coming out of turn run. four, Didn't Bobby Gerhardt, Didn't Chris Busher. It's Gerhardt winning for the seventh time at Daytona. Seven times here in 24 starts. They needed a caution lap, and that's exactly what they got. When you came in on lap five, how confident were you that you could make it all the way? Uh, not very, to be honest with you. Some things had to go our way, but uh, got to take a gamble now and then, and we took a gamble. And the gamble paid off for Gerhardt as we're about to get underway with the second race of the 2011 season. It's the ARCA Racing Series 250 from Talladega Super Speedway. Bobby Gerhardt has eight career wins. Seven of those wins have come at Daytona. The eighth win came right here at Talladega. Take a look at our starting grid on the pole. Ty Dillon once again. And Kyle Fowler will start on the outside. Looks a lot like the front row at Daytona. Tim George Jr. and Scott Legacy Jr. making up row number two. Scott Legacy Jr. has won in the ARCA Racing Series. He's won behind the wheel of the car that he's driving today. So he's hoping that he can get back to victory lane and have success here at Talladega. Great qualifying effort for Milka Duna. Qualifies in the eighth position in Patrick Shelter's car. Joey Coulter full-time in the truck series this year. Brian Silas driving the number 98. That's actually an Eddie Sharp entry for Brian Silas. A little bit different than what he's been running. And Bobby Gerhardt, obviously one of our favorites, will start on the outside. Matt Merrill had a great third-place run at Daytona earlier this year. He's back in the 12th spot. Back in row number seven, Chris Buescher, the young man who has gone to victory lane a couple times already in the ARCA Racing Series, looking to find victory at a super speedway. Starts outside of Dakota Armstrong, our defending winner of this race. Here Bork in the number six will start 16th on the field. Grant Enfinger always runs extremely well here. He was leading this race on the last lap last year and ended up sixth. Fill this racetrack, you're very aware. You've gone to victory lane here. It's, it's daunting in the fact that you have such high banks and high speeds but it's not so much physical as it is a mental race. You are mentally exhausted after a race like this because you have to be aware of what's going on. You have a lot of help from your spotter, obviously, but you have to know, before you make a move, you have to know if somebody's there, if they're coming where they're looking. By the end of this 250 miles, these guys will be emotionally spent. And again, we'll see speeds upwards of 195 miles an hour in the pack. You see the 44 of Frank Kimmel. Frank Kimmel has been to victory lane here at Talladega. He's never won at Daytona, though. Let's take a look at the numbers for Talladega Super Speedway. As you can see, 2.66 miles, and that extra .16 miles bigger than Daytona is a huge difference here. This racetrack is extremely wide. You see it's banked more than Daytona, 33 degrees. The, the tri-oval banked 16 degrees. That's more than a lot of racetracks, and man, is this thing fast. Our race analysis for today's race. 94 laps, 250 miles. The critical part of this is the pit window, 55 to 60 laps. We documented that Bobby Gerhardt went 75 laps at Daytona with, by virtue of all the caution laps. Same type situation could happen here. If this race goes green, then you're looking at 55 to 60 laps. Each caution lapse adds a lap to what you can go. We'll be riding along with a few different drivers, one of those being Benny Chastain. He'll start 35th on the field today. We're also going to ride along with Pierre Bork. He's in the Revolution Resources Fight Network Toyota for Eddie Sharp Racing. Chris Busher will carry one of our cameras. He's won twice. Both races coming at Toledo today. He starts 14. We're also going to ride along with a 55 of Hal Martin. That's another Venturini Motorsports car. That's the NOLA Motorsports Park Toyota, and he will start 11th. We ride along with Joey Coulter as well. He was 21st at Daytona earlier this year. He starts 7th today. Let's go back trackside to Ray Dunlap.
Well, thank you, Rick. You know, in the early 80s, when I started coming to Talladega, it was all Davey Allison in the ARCA series here at Talladega. He won four, and then Grant Adcox took over. He went to victory lane at this track five times. And then in the late 90s, we saw Tim Steele dominate at this track. But the last 13 times they've run ARCA races at this particular track, a different winner in each of them. And today, my prediction is that number expands to 14. I think the 41 car of Ty Dillon will dominate today's race on his way to his first victory of the season and maybe setting up a good run at the 2011 championship. Bob Dillner? Ray, one of the guys that I want everybody to keep an eye on today starts in the sixth spot. Brandon McReynolds, he's the son of former NASCAR crew chief and one of our colleagues, Larry McReynolds. Well, right now, Brandon McReynolds, a good race car driver, is rideless this year. No rides on the short tracks, no rides in the NASCAR big time. So this is an audition for him. He says he needs a good run today. He's in the Turner Motorsports car and looking very good today for the ARCA Racing Series. Green flag in the air. We are underway with race number two of the ARCA Racing Series. Have RCR teammates lined up on the bottom of the racetrack, Ty Dillon and Tim George Jr. Field spreads out early as they enter one and two. The preferred line around this racetrack right at the bottom, the double yellow lines, they can't pass below that double yellow line. They can't go down there, but they can't improve their position. And remember, there are a couple different philosophies on how to run this race. you got people like Ty Dillon that want to be up front. Then you have other guys that want to drop to the back in the event that it may be a big one. At our first super speedway race, it was Busher that followed Bobby Gerhardt around the racetrack. Didn't take the opportunity to get out and challenge him, but we know now after he has a race under his belt on a super speedway that he will be challenging for the win here at super at this super speedway. And we always have to keep an eye on that Bobby Gerhardt. Right now, Bobby running back in the ninth spot. Back in the ninth spot in that lead draft. Sitting on the inside of the car, the Lucas Oil Chevrolet. As Matt Merrill, the 32, right behind him. Ty Dillon led the first lap as he did in Daytona. Ty Dillon was dominant early on until pit stops took place, and that's how he lost the lead. And then he had to work his way to try to get back up to the front, but could never get there. And it was very challenging to pass at that new, newly resurfaced racetrack at Daytona. The line forming at the bottom of the racetrack. Stuck on the outside right now on his own. Looks like the 25 of Scott Legacy. And I think these drivers are playing it smart right now. Let's get some laps under our belt here. We've got 94 laps here. We're not going to win this thing in the first five laps. I think Scott Legacy would love to be down on that inside line, in line, but he can't get there yet. Door to door with Dakota Armstrong right now in that 22. Still on the outside looking in. There's a gap in front of Dakota. Problem is Scott Legacy can't get to it. Has a little help coming from, from behind. Looks like Milka Duna in the 63 car. That's Super Guard 63 of Milka Duna also on the outside trying to catch up. See if two cars can work better than the pack. If they can hook up. We saw that at Daytona. We haven't seen a lot of it here. A lot of people don't know exactly how to do it. Yeah, the, 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 bumping, the bumping deal and the pushing deal like the Cup Series does doesn't really apply that much in this, in this series. Again, these guys and ladies doesn't, don't really have the experience that the Cup guys do, obviously. And these cars are a little bit different. The, the new Sprint Cup car is a little bit different than this old style car. This is, the, this is the, basically the same car that we ran four or five years ago in the Cup Series. We're on lap number four out in front of the field. It's Ty Dillon, Tim George Jr. runs second, Kyle Fowler, Tom Hessert, Brandon McReynolds, your top five. Sixth is Joey Coulter, Brian Silas, Bobby Gerhardt, Matt Merrill, and Hal Martin are your top ten. A lot of patience being shown right now but by all these drivers. And that's really the key. I think when you come to Talladega, you've got to show patience, even when you decide it's time to go out and try to make a pass. You have to be patient and make sure someone's going to go with you or you get hung out. You have to have some help. That's, that's, there's no question about it. That's the problem at Daytona. Nobody was willing to jump out of line. Joey Licata was running third late in the race, jumped out of line. Nobody went with him. He fell back to six, but I applaud him for trying it. He was trying to make something happen. Right now, RCR very strong out in front of this field. Tim George Jr. running in the second spot right behind Ty Dillon. Ty Dillon, grandson to Richard Childress. His brother Austin Dillon running 
consistently in the Camping World Truck Series. There's Kyle Fowler running in the third spot, one of Venturini Motorsports entries. And they're always good at this racetrack. As a matter of fact, Bill Venturini went over 200 miles per hour in qualifying back when he was racing here in the Arkansas. I think he holds the all-time record at this race at 205 miles an hour back in, uh, back in the 80s. Tom Hessert in that Ken Schrader entry, the number 52. Currently running in the top five. He's got a fourth place position holding on to now. And Brandon McReynolds in the fifth spot. Talked about his father, Larry McReynolds, one of our broadcast partners, former crew chief, Daytona 500 winning crew chief. Brandon came here last year, had a great car, had some overheating issues, spent a little bit of time on pit road, but was able to run right with the leaders the entire race. That's a great opportunity for him in the Turner Motorsports Wolfpack Rental Chevrolet. Again, that's the same car that Ricky Carmichael ran fourth with at Daytona this year. Mark Rett, who won this race two years ago with Justin Lofton, is the crew chief, and there's Mark right there. That's Larry McReynolds right there. That's <laughs> Larry Mack watching. This young man go around this racetrack. Stay with us more here on Speed, your motorsports authority. Coverage of the ARCA Racing Series on Speed is brought to you by Burger King, home of the Whopper, and by Menards. Save big money at Menards. Already the pack has caught one of the slower cars and had to make its way by a lapped car already. Tim Mitchell going a lap down. And so the pack moved off of the yellow line, but they all moved off. It was synchronization. Well, Ty Dillon told us that he was going to get to that yellow line, stay there, try to lead a bunch of laps, and he certainly has done that. See the field lined up down at the bottom of the racetrack, Scott, right on that double yellow line. Scott Legacy finally able to get down to the bottom of the racetrack. Right now, Scott's running in the 14th spot. It's like drivers spreading out, trying to get a look in front of them, seeing what's happening. Bob, what's happening down on pit road? Well, I'll tell you what, you guys have been preaching patience, and right now that's what TJ Majors, the spotter for Scott Legacy Jr., is preaching to him. His driver went from fourth all the way back to 14th. In fact, just a moment ago on the radio, Scott Legacy came on the radio and said, man, I have no love out here. And they said, be patient because you've got a good race car. So right now, he just plans to get in line and ride for just a little while and then get that 25 car back to the front when it counts. A lot of experience with T.J. Major spotting for Scott Legacy Jr. because T.J. Major spots for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Yeah, absolutely. He knows how to do it, especially here at a, at a restrictor plate racetrack like this. So they're in good shape. Again, we're just just eight laps into this right. thing. We've got, you know, 80, 86 more laps. Here's our, there's our leader right there, Ty Dillon. Look at where the second pack is, though. This is our lead pack. And look how far back you have to go before you get the second pack. And look who's in that second pack, the 44 of Frank Kimmel. Yeah, one of the most experienced drivers we have here. He's following Chad McCombie. I know those guys hooked up a lot in yesterday's final practice to see how their cars would work together. We we'll have trouble out of the three. That's Brent Brevac. Brent started this race 25th, and it doesn't look like... I He's think, going to have the finish he was hoping for. I think he may have a wheel bearing or something going. You can see I, that the left front tire is, is locked, locked up. up. I, would, I would think that he probably had lost a wheel bearing and it's seized it up to the spindle. They also had bad luck at Daytona. He was running 21st when the left wheel problems happened. So a tough ending for Brent Brevac, right? Rick, I just wanted to send out a uh, shout out to his former crew chief, Joe Sonkowski. Joe has been in the ARCA series for a long, long time. 1990, he was the mechanic of the year, and he's not at the racetrack to help out his team. He had a stroke right before the Daytona race, missed that event, and this one, Joe is recovering back in Versailles, Ohio. So our well wishes to Joe, and it looks like uh, they may be done for the day in the three camp. Yeah, tough, tough start to the... 2011 season for the Brevacs and the Brevac name as far as ARCA racing goes is synonymous I mean they're almost like the Venturinis they've been around this series almost since its inception they've been around a long long time yeah Brett's uh, father Bob a mm -hmm. former ARCA champion There's, is that Joey Locata in the 77 remember we talked about having yep. such a good run at Daytona finished sixth at Daytona and now Joey Locata also slow down on the apron looks like he's going to make his way onto pit road Without a doubt, unscheduled pit stop. Nakata was running in the 26th spot, and he continues to fall back. See the 11 moving up. That's Richard Harriman. Red car on the outside. 
moving out of the pack's way as they go by. Remember, we haven't talked a whole lot about the yellow line there, Ty Dillon sticking right to that yellow line. You cannot make a pass below that yellow line. Remember, that's out of bounds. You can go down below there. You just cannot improve your position. But that's why they want to stay right next to that yellow line and not allow anyone to get their nose underneath them. Still up front, Ty Dillon, Tim George Jr., Kyle Fowler, Tom Hesser, Brandon McReynolds. They're your top five. They haven't moved out of line. You see them moving just a bit out of line. They don't want to give up the position, but they also want to make sure they get air into that engine to make sure they don't get too hot. That's one of the things that the guys were working on yesterday during our final practice. It's essentially uh, an impound race, but they do have a final practice after qualifying. You're not allowed to change a whole lot of stuff, but you can work on your tape on your grill and to make sure you have that opening right for when you get a big pack like this you can get enough air into the cool light engine you see Chris Buescher now drops to the back of this pack Chris is being shown in the 16th spot Ty Dillon crosses the stripe that completes the 12th lap we're on lap number 13 of 94 and it's been all Ty Dillon since the drop of the green flag his teammate Tim George Jr. just behind him Kyle Fowler and that's Venerini Motorsports number 15 running in the third spot Hessert and Brandon McReynolds are your top five. They continue to hold their position. Joey Coulter, Brian Silas, Bobby Gerhardt, Matt Merrill, and Hal Martin all lining up behind them in your top ten. Then young Dakota Armstrong, who won this race a year ago, just outside the top ten in 11. Right behind him, Grant Infinger, as we mentioned, was leading this race last year on the last lap. Got shuffled out, ended up finishing sixth. He finished third the year before. Now, Phil, we talked about how far back that second pack is running. Is that to stay out of the potential big one, or could that be a mistake? Well, no, I think it's to stay out of the big one, but they don't want to obviously go a lap down. Right. So right now they're running about a second slower than this lead pack. You can see now as these guys have to make their way around some lap cars, watch them all fight to try to get back to the bottom of the racetrack. How about Tom Hessert's going to pull out a line, though? Tom Hessert looking to the outside. Looks like he has room to challenge on the outside but doesn't make up any distance a little bumping and banging a little drafting going on behind him see now Tom they're spreading out around the racetrack had no help up there Dakota Armstrong in the 22 is going to come along and maybe help him no Dakota he's going to go to the outside moves to the outside of Hesert wants to take the spot those two run side by side which definitely is not as quick as that line on the bottom D Dakota Armstrong right now is way more important for him just to get behind Tom Hesser, try not to lose any ground. He's going to try to get to the bottom of the racetrack as soon as that last car goes by. Tom Hesser was running in the top five and now has dropped back, maybe holding on to a top ten spot after making that move. Actually all the way back to 12. Smoke coming out of the 15 of Kyle Fowler. Looks like he has problems now. Fowler moves to the inside of the racetrack. The smoke continuing to come out. Kyle was running in the third spot. It looks looks like it might be an engine situation for Kyle. I'm sure the ARCA racing officials are looking at the racetrack to make sure he didn't put anything down. And listening to the radios. These drivers will let them know if there's fluid or they thought fluid was coming out of that 15. Tough break for Kyle Fowler though. Such a great qualifying effort. Bob, what are you hearing about that team? Well, Kyle Fallon just reported on the radio. He said he didn't look at the gauges, but that engine is toast for that number 15 machine. A tough break for the teenager, second time this year on the front row, and he was looking to start and finish up front this time around. Just an 18-year-old and a disappointing finish potentially for Kyle Fowler here at Talladega. Ty Dillon, the young man. Oh, we've got smoke coming out of Terry Jones's number 30. A huge plume of smoke. That's just as he crossed the start finish line and the caution comes out. So the first caution comes out. Strategy is really going to come into play right now because we've completed 15 laps. That means a guy like Bobby Gerhardt may challenge this once again. Yeah, that means almost 80 laps. So again, this is a 50 mile longer race than what we had at Daytona. We know Bobby stopped on lap number five, but to go eight, almost 80 laps here, I think that's going to be a stretch. But he may try it, and in that way, you're in position. If you get a lot of caution laps mm -hmm. in the next 40 or 50 laps, then you know you're fairly secure. But uh, I tell you, that's a long way to go. Terry Jones bringing the 30 to a stop now on the apron. A lot of smoke all around this racetrack now as the engine expired for Terry Jones.
16 laps into this one, and it's Ty Dillon, Tim George Jr., and Brandon McReynolds, your top three. Here come your lead pack onto pit road. Our first caution came out when Cherry, Terry Jones's engine expired, and so Ty, Ty Dillon leads the field down pit road. Bob? Joey Coulter in that number 16 car. He runs fourth right now, hoping for a great run here today. He's got the Rip It number 16 in his box right now. It'll be a fuel-only stop for Joey Coulter, right? Down on my end, Bob, it was a tough decision exactly what to do. Uh, Ty Dillon's crew chief Flash said we got to come in and get some gas so that we don't get stuck in a, a green pit cycle. The 31, his teammate, is also down pit road. We saw the five of Gerhardt had a little bit of a problem here. He's going to lose two or three spots on pit road as they leave the exit. It was Ty Dillon, then Brandon McReynolds that came across the start-finish line one and two to Sir. finish up that lap. Several drivers stayed on the racetrack. Uh, the leader, I think, will be Grant Enfinger. Dakota Armstrong, Brian Silas also stay on the racetrack. Right there is Grant Enfinger in the 36 car, the Justin Allgaier Motorsports car. Tomorrow Speed's ultimate pre-race show hits the high banks of Talladega. Brad Keselowski, Clint Boyer, and points leader Carl Edler will join us live. Plus, we'll take a look at the importance of driver-spotter relationships on super speedways. NASCAR race day built by the Home Depot from Talladega that Sunday, 10 Eastern, live on speed. Carl who? Edwards. <laughs> I'm I, hoping I, he's, I I hope he's watching, else. by the way. <laughs> well, you know he's watching. He's going to get a good laugh out of that. There's our Aaron's lucky dog, Benny Chastain. In the drive to end hunger Ford for Bob Shack Motorsports. Benny carrying one of our onboard cameras. You know the wheel doesn't move a whole lot here at Talladega, but the mind is sure turning. <laughs> Bob Dillner. Just check with Dakota Armstrong's crew chief, Paul Andrews, and I said, why not come in right now? We saw Bobby Gerhardt gamble at Daytona, and it paid off for him, and he said, you can't make it. He says, there's no way we can get the fuel mileage out of our number 22 machine and make it to the finish. So it was just clear, cut, and dry for the 22 of Dakota Armstrong. They couldn't make it if they came down pit road right now. It makes you wonder if others can. Bob, I really doubt if they can make it from here, but, you know, as, as Flash Scott Nassett, crew chief for Ty Dillon, said, I hate to get get another long green flag run and get caught out and have to make a pit stop under green. So that's why the majority of the field came in just for a little little bit of fuel to top these things off. So now they can go at least 55 or 60 laps from here, even if we go green. Out in front of the field right now, Grant Enfinger, Dakota Armstrong, Brian Silas, Pierre Bork. Those are your top four. James Hilton scored in the fifth spot. Ty Dillon scored seventh. He was the first off of pit road. Welcome back to Talladega Super Speedway, the ARCA Racing Series 250, the second event of the 2011 season. 19 races on the schedule for this series. And they go back to back on Super Speedways to kick off the 2011 season. Again, Grant Enfinger out in front of the field after the first caution came out. Dakota Armstrong, Brian Silas, Pierre Bork, and James Hilton, your top five right now. Ray Dunlap. Hey, Rick, earlier you were talking about experience up on the spotter stand. Well, for the number 41 of Ty Dillon, they've got Billy O'Day up there talking, and he's been communicating back and forth with the spotter for Brandon McReynolds saying, hey, we want you to go with us. They said, yes, we're committed to stay right up there and go. But the bottom line here is Richard Childress also on the radio saying it looked to me like Brandon McReynolds has been a little bit aggressive in the corner doing some bump drafting. So let's go communicate with him. We need these two cars to finish up at the front of the field. Bob? Well, Brent Brevac in that three machine, we saw him with a right front flat a little while earlier in this race. A simple report, the sway bar arm broke on that car, and that's what caused the damage. He has since come in, replaced that sway bar arm, and he's back out in the racetrack right now. There's Frank Kimmel. He came back down pit road for a second time. Frank was one of those drivers that elected to run in that back pack, the second pack. He, he is full. I'm telling you right now, he got it full of fuel because the overflow, the vent on the back is still 
fuel is still coming out of it. They got that thing as full as you could possibly get it. And remember, this is the older style fuel fueling systems, right. not like the not like all of NASCAR is using now with that closed system, the the vented, vented system right. where you don't have a, a catch can man. This is the old style here, so that's why you still have an overflow coming out the back of the car. I know I was talking to Bill Kimmel, Frank's brother and crew chief yesterday, and they said they've been doing a lot of work on fuel mileage. They saw what Bobby Gerhardt did at Daytona, and they've been doing a lot of work in that area. Wednesday on a special Car Warriors, the All-Stars face off against Air Force Challengers to create the ultimate Hollywood car of destruction. This time, they only have 36 hours. If you thought 72 hours was insane, think again. All new Car Warriors, that's Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern, on speed. Again, out in front of this field, Grant Enfinger, Dakota Armstrong, Brian Silas, Pierre Borg, James Hilton, Nick Igdalski, all stayed on the racetrack. How about Grant Enfinger? So I'm going to take this opportunity to get me a little bit of fuel. Grant decides to duck onto pit road. They'll be giving the field one to go. And so Grant thinks this is the time to fill up. We're going to complete lap number 19. I'm going to com complete lap number 20. That leaves 74 laps. That is not totally out of the question. So a potential pit road strategy now for Grant Enfinger in that 36. But things have to work so well. You have to get enough caution laps. Daytona, we had a lot of caution laps. And that's what allowed Bobby Gerhardt to run those 75 laps. Tom Hessert's in here, Bob. This is the fourth time that Tom Hessert has been on pit road during this caution. He actually went down on the apron, and they're working on the bottom of the left front fender right now, trying to get that pushed out a little bit because it got caved in. But John Monson, his crew chief, has been filling up his car each time he comes in. He's going to try to make it the rest of the way. He's going to stretch it and see if he can go the rest of the distance here at Talladega. Did you see the front of that race car? It was a little bit dirty all around kind of the edges, but right in front, you could tell there's been a little bit of bump drafting going on. Bob? A little bit of bump drafting, and also if you looked at the front end of that machine, all sorts of oil on the front nose and the windshield. They really had to clean that windshield hard because, remember, Hessert was behind Kyle Fowler, and that's why he dropped back because he saw that 15 car leaking oil for a couple laps on that racetrack. Good move by Tom Hessert. Yep. It's amazing how... Uh, how easy and how quickly a windshield can get covered with oil with just somebody spitting just a little bit of fluid. And that solves the riddle of why did Tom Hessert get out of line? Well, <laughs> he knew something was about to happen big in front of him. I thought he was going for the lead. So. <laughs> <laughs> he just wanted to get out of the way and still be able to see. Dakota Armstrong won this race a year ago. And now because Grant Enfinger ducked onto pit road, Dakota Armstrong is back in front of the field. Brian Silas, again, driving the 98 today. Still has a relationship with Andy Hillenberg. Andy Hillenberg. As, you, as you mentioned, this is a cooperative effort between Andy Hillenberg and Eddie Sharp for Brian here. So a good opportunity. There's Pierre Bork. That's a, another one of Eddie's cars. That's a team car to Brian Silas. He's right there behind his teammate. How about mid-70s, James Harvey Hilton? running back there he's currently in the fourth spot he's a former winner here at this racetrack at this racetrack in the cup series green flag flies we're back to racing about 40 years ago <laughs> <laughs> he, he won here before most of the guys <laughs> running this race were born exactly see frank jumps to the inside to try to make some moves on lap 22 of this 94 lap race spread out pretty quickly here. Chris Buescher also made an extra pit stop and he ended up restarting this race in the 25th position. Scott Legacy Jr. back in 21st. Marietta Defoe in 22nd. Again, Tom Hesser back there in 26th. We'll see if they're able to make the move back up toward the front. Again, fuel mileage could come into play depending upon the caution laps that are run. Pierre Bork on the bottom of the racetrack needs some help just in front of him. The 5 of Bobby Gerhardt, then the 32 of Matt Merrill duck in front of him. Now Joey Coulter goes by. I think the train's going by right now. There's Hal Martin in the 55. There comes Chad McCombie. Remember, Chad was leading that second pack before that caution flag. Now he's back up with a lead lap. There's Milk Aduna. There's a 51 car of a bot.
battle for the lead. Out in front, Dakota Armstrong on the bottom of the racetrack. Ty Dillon trying to make the pass as they go through one and two. We saw how, how far behind Ty Dillon was. That front two cars took just one lap of that big pack to catch him. But that was through three and four. They're coming to the tri-oval now, side by side. The outside line has helped Dakota Armstrong strung out on the bottom of the racetrack. Ty Dillon takes the lead back. He's got Brandon McReynolds right behind him and Tim George Jr. running third. Bobby Gerhardt running fourth right now. Joey Coulter, the 16 purple car on the outside. He has Hal Martin, the red 55 behind him. So Dakota Armstrong running the bottom of the racetrack got hung out and the train went by. See Joey Coulter jump to the inside, leaves Hal Martin on the outside by himself. He has Sean Corr, the 82 car now gonna pull up behind him. Brian Silas in the 98. On the inside, Hal Martin in the 55 on the outside. Those two battling for position. There's Milka Duna, the 63 car on the inside. And there comes Frank Kemmel. Remember, we saw Frank make extra pit stops. And now he, here he is caught up with, essentially, with the lead pack. Now he jumps to the outside with momentum. Trying to make that outside line work. Frank Kimmel leading the pack on the outside. Bob Dillner. Just want to show you the tear off that came off of Tom Hessert's race car. This is why he dropped back. Phil, you talked about him dropping back. Get that oil from Kyle Fowler's car coming off of that car, hitting his windshield. Well, take a look at how cloudy this is. Now you can see me. Now Tom Hesser can see a lot better on the racetrack. That was a good look for you, Bob. <laughs> Three wide here at Talladega. This is what we're used to seeing here. See Frank Kimmel, that bright yellow car on the outside, the 44. There's Brett Hudson, the 94, right behind Frank. Christian Finger in the 36, way outside that three wide. Remember, he waited till there was one to go to top off that fuel. He has Chris Busher, the 17, behind him. Front of this pack running right along the bottom of the racetrack, right along the double yellow line, and then about seven cars, eight cars, ten cars back. You see them going side by side. A second line beginning to form up. We'll see if that line can make its way to the front. Now we see Infinger ducking down into the lower line, leaving some of those cars hung out on the outside. Kimmel again in front of that second line. Frank not able to clear Milka Duna to try to get to the bottom. I think he would love to get to the bottom. A lot of these cars were in that second pack before that first caution. Frank Kimmel being one of those. Chad McCombie, who's right in front of Milka Duna. Now Frank has room to get to the bottom. Is he going to come down there? We'll see if... He wants to stay with that outside line, or he ducks in behind the inside line. Scott Lagasse, the 25, pokes his nose in there and gets Milka Duna pushed up to the outside. Tom Hessert now behind the 25 of Scott Lagasse. Milka Duna finished 31st at Daytona earlier this year. It was announced earlier this week that they will definitely run the full schedule here with Shelter Motorsports in that 63 car. Obviously, Milka has experience in the Indy cars, has run the Indy 500 a number of times. One thing she doesn't have experience in, dirt. Dirt track racing, and that's how diverse this racing series is. They will race on dirt. They go from super speedways all the way to dirt tracks. Oh, oh in James the wall Hilton. is James Harvey Hilton in at 48. Looks like he may have lost a right front tire. Caution still not out. As Hilton will make his way down. A lot of damage to James's car. Caution is out now. And now the caution does come out for debris. So our second caution comes out. Now will Grant Infinger stay on the racetrack hoping to push the limit of that fuel mileage? Well, this, this is when the guys have to make a decision. Do we want to come in? top off now, have that extra insurance that, that we think we can go the rest of the way, or do they feel like we're going to get enough caution laps in order to be able to make them uh, have enough fuel from that earlier pit stop? A lot, a lot of damage, damage yeah, yeah, to the right side of that race car. Going upwards of 190 miles an hour. Looks as though the right front tire went away for James. He makes the hard left turn and heads behind the wall. There he is, top of your screen, already up into the wall. Looked like uh, you saw a, ca a car smoking down there. You Originally, it looks like maybe James cut a tire down, 
But there was another car could have potentially been involved in that. When the caution came out, this was the response. Nokoduno getting off the gas, and you see the 94 of Brett Hudson just makes slight Checking contact. Checking up a little bit. Tom Hessert in that 52, down to the bottom of the racetrack, giving room. The pit sure. road's not open yet, so we'll see if uh, who elects to pit when they come back around. Billy Venturini. Billy calls the shots on, on race day for the 25 of Scott Legacy. Larry Fitzgerald will receive the Aaron's Lucky Dog. You see the guys up on the wall for Richard Childress Racing. Yeah. Looks like Ty Dillon's going to take this opportunity to come down pit road and get some tires. Top off that fuel. Getting closer to being in that window. 28 laps complete. We'll finish 29 laps when they come on to pit road if they come to pit road. I think these guys, most of these drivers and teams would be fairly comfortable and confident that they could make it from here if they stop. And Ty Dillon restarted this race just outside of the top five. Only five or six cars stayed on the racetrack the last time the caution came out and was able to right away work his way back up to the front and lead this race. So potentially this is another situation where he could get back up to the front fairly easily if he's got help. Oh, without a doubt. Here's our Aaron's lucky dog, Barry Fitzgerald. But, you know, I think the thing that sticks in the back of their mind is at Daytona, they had some damage from an incident, came in, said, no problem to work your way to the front and weren't able really to pass anybody in Daytona with that new surface but again I don't think it's like that here we've got so much more room and the, and the corners the radius of the corners isn't quite as tight as it is in Daytona. Fresh asphalt at Daytona left a lot of questions out there for a lot of the drivers. Now I think they are feeling a little more comfortable with super speedway racing. Dillon stays out. Ty Dillon stays out. Brandon McReynolds. Dakota Armstrong takes the opportunity to come down pit road as well as the 98 of Brian Silas. Tom Hessert also making the left turn onto pit road. Bob? Billy Venturini said we need to come in. He's been crunching the numbers on his calculator after stopping in that last caution period. They couldn't go the rest of the distance. Now he believes they can make it the rest of the way. There's Dakota Armstrong. They stay to get the very last ounce of fuel in that car. And oh, by the way, Bobby Gerhardt stayed on the racetrack. <laughs> we always have to keep an eye on Bobby Gerhardt. He and brother Billy, they are masters. It's the super speedways and figuring out fuel mileage and just how it could work to get out to the front. Camouflage. You can hardly see the fans here at Talladega. <laughs> Welcome back doing a little work on Tom Hessert's number 52. This happened on pit road. Let's take a look, Phil. Yeah, Tom was in his pit. He was getting ready to finish his pit work. We can see he's right up, right up here. And as he gets ready to pull out, the six of Pierre Bork comes in. He's going to turn hard left. And you see right there, there's the contact right in the middle of that circle with Tom Hessert and Pierre Bork. But now let's go to the onboard shot of Pierre Bork. Watch this now. Watch him turn hard coming in. You see the little bump right there, but the problem is up here is his pit. He pulled in like four pits too early, and that's why Tom Hessert had no idea that Pierre Bork was going to be turning in right in front of him, and you see all the damage on this Federated Auto Parts Camry. Bob. Bob. Tom Hessert pretty ticked off inside that 52 right now. They put about five tons of Barabond on the hood and the right front fender on that machine. John Monson, the crew chief, says his biggest concern is that hood and how it hinges on the fenders. And right now that hood is wiggling a little bit. So they're trying to make that secure because we all know aerodynamics very important here at Talladega. Tom Hessert, not a happy camper inside that race car. See the six of Pierre Bork again anticipating getting into his pit stall gets in a little bit early and that causes problems for the 52 of Tom Hesser. Coverage of the Arca Racing Series on Speed is brought to you by Ansel for over 100 years, the world leading hand protector. A beautiful day today at Talladega Super Speedway. We're just over 16 hours when this race was supposed to start. Thunderstorms and tornado warnings went through the area and we see damage to the front of that race car, Bob. 
Right now, Tom Hesser down on pit road again. He went out after all that tape went on the right front fender, and he felt like the fender was rubbing against that right front tire. So right now, they're looking at that race car, trying to figure things out, but uh, hopefully get that fender off that tire, guys. You see all the X-Flex tape they put on that car, but again, you see all the oil mm -hmm. from, from Kyle Fowler's uh, blown engine, and so it's, it's very difficult for that any, anything to stick to right. that oil, so I'm sure they had to wipe that thing off, but it looks like it's already even peeling back a little bit in the very nose of that car. That incident occurred when Pierre Bork was coming onto pit road, so that was where that damage happened to the front end of that race car. Ty Dillon out in front of this field, stayed on the racetrack under this most recent caution. Brandon McReynolds also stayed on the track right behind him. There's Brandon right there in the Wolfpack Reynolds Chevrolet for Turner Motorsports. Tim George Jr. The Applebee's Chevrolet for Richard Childress Racing right now running third. 27th was his finish at Daytona earlier this year, hoping to improve on that. The guy who can't improve on his finish earlier this year is Bobby Gerhard. He won that first race. There's Matt Merrill, the 32 car right behind him. That's the Wintron Motorsports car. That's that's Matt had a great third place run at Daytona starting out this year. Right behind him, Joey Coulter in the number 16. Joey was 21st earlier this year at Daytona. Okaduno right behind Joey Coulter in seventh. Hal Martin, Chris Busher, and Mariev Defoe round out our top ten. Green flag back in the air. Ty Dillon wastes no time jumping right to the bottom of the racetrack. Everyone's fighting for the bottom of the racetrack. See that fluorescent yellow of Frank Kimmel back in the pack a ways. Three wide just in front of him. Kimmel has won at this racetrack. Bobby Gerhardt has won at this racetrack. And Dakota Armstrong are the three that are entered in this race that have been to victory lane before. The other 36 all searching for a win here at this track. Sean Core, the 82 on the outside. Frank Kimmel, the 44 right behind him. Brian Rose, the 19, stuck in the middle. So Chad Hockenbra on the 58 back there as well. Here's Pierre Bork. Remember, he had the damage from that collision with Tom Hesser on pit road. I love listening to the engine when you're at a racetrack like Talladega. Very rarely will even change almost 100 RPM. They keep it wide open all the way around. All the way around. Sometimes if you're in a good trite draft, you have to back off a little bit to keep, you know, when you get a little bit of a pull. But, uh, and sometimes you'll just touch the brake instead of backing off the throttle. The other thing that I'm noticing early in this race is we've completed 34 laps. We haven't seen really any bump drafting up to this point. Yeah, I just... Not a lot of bumpers matching up right now. Yeah, they really don't match up. And, and these cars, again, aren't... Uh, is, is prone to the to that working as well as it does in the in the cup series and as the nationwide series also so milka duno take a look to the outside let's see if she's going to make a move and will anyone go with her just in front hal martin in that 55 looks like she wanted to try to have someone help like chris busher in the 17 but busher stayed on the bottom of the track it really has to be pre-arranged you have to know and talk to somebody your spotter has to talk to another spotter or somebody from your pit has to run down to the other pit because more than likely they're not just going to jump out and go with you they're going to actually close that hole up now now milko duna was is going to lose some positions here there is a little bit of a gap right behind the 22 of dakota armstrong she should be able to get in there if she'll turn left now she stays on the outside though those cars on the bottom will probably close that hole up and the hole is getting closed up right now even as we speak it's gone she it's may she may find herself at the end of this lead draft by the time she's able to get back in line. The hole just in front of Dakota Armstrong, but that will also close up. But that's also part of learning. This kind of racing, too. If you, if you don't pull out a line, you don't know what's going to happen when you pull out a line. And we still have a lot of this race to go. We still have 57 laps left in this race, so she has plenty of time to make her way back to the front. But she is going to end up at the back of this lead lap, uh, lead lap pack. Saw one of the windshield tear-offs flying around the racetrack. That's one thing you don't want to pick up on the front of your race car. If it gets in front of the intake for air into the radiator, you will overheat. So Milka Duna on the outside still trying to find a way to get in. Chad McCombie in the one. 
Grant Infinger in the 36. Now, Grant Infinger driving that 36, that's the Allgaier car. And Justin Allgaier has won at this racetrack before. I saw Justin down in the garage area, kind of overlooking uh, what was going on with this 36 car during practice. Ray Dunlap, what's happening with Ty Dillon out front? Well, you know, you guys were talking about learning here at this racetrack, and I think Ty is learning a good bit. I told you Billy O'Day, who is Kevin Harvick, Harvick spotter, is up on top of the roof. He's also getting some information from his grandfather, Richard Childress, and his father, Mike Dillon, is on the backstretch. So lots of uh, different people giving him info, but on that last restart, Ty got just a little bit too big of a lead, and his grandfather, RC, came on and said, drag the brake through the corner a little bit and let that group catch back up to you if you get too big of a lead they're going to figure it out and in the future they'll line up and go by you and there's a lot of experience coming from his grandfather <laughs> oh yeah he's been he, he here knows, a long time yeah he knows what it takes to get to victory lane with drivers like kevin harvick clint dale, boyer dale senior won 157 times here dale senior obviously great success Scott Lagasse right now in the 25 car is running 10th, and he's the first car that pitted on lap 29 or later. All the, all the cars right now running up in the top 7th positions pitted back on lap number 17. Then Chris Busch is running 8th. He pitted on lap number 20. Mary Eve Defoe, who started all the way back at the back because of the, of the penalty qualifying, basically was uh, disqualified, is now up in the top 10 in the ninth position. There's Mary Ev right there in the 12 car. Currently running ninth. Talked to her a little bit in the garage area. She said they are for sure going to run the entire schedule this year. So that's great news for the series. Scott Lagasse trying to trying to get to the inside of Mary Ev without going below that yellow line, which is pretty pretty difficult task. <laughs> Very difficult to do. Right now as the field is hugging that yellow line, double yellow line. Dakota Armstrong, though, stuck on the outside now. We saw a little bit of a gap in front of that car earlier, and now he goes into the second line. A couple cars looking to tack on behind Dakota Armstrong, but it's the inside line that keeps chugging along. Ty Dillon, Brandon McReynolds out in front of the field here at Talladega. Just under two weeks, and the NASCAR Nationwide Series will be right here on Speed, your Motorsports Authority from Richmond. That's Friday, April 29, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. That's going to be a great race here on Speed. Out in front of this field, Ty Dillon, Brandon McReynolds, Tim George Jr., Bobby Gerhardt, and Matt Merrill are your top five. Frank Kimmel... Trying to get that second line to move. We haven't seen it get too close to the front yet. See Chad McCombie, the one car right behind Frank. I believe that's Sean Core behind Chad in the 82 car. Marietta Defoe following Busher. 17 in the 12. And a little Kimmel, run right there yeah, for Frank. Looks like Kimmel has a little bit of momentum if he could just get. The cars behind him to close that gap a bit, give him a little assistance. You can see Frank side drafting a little bit, trying to, to stall the momentum of the cars on the inside. There's Mary Ev Defoe now. Frank is on the outside of Mary Ev. Now Chad McCombie has closed the gap just a bit on Frank Kimmel. They're trying to get that outside line to move. Bob. And that's the problem right now. Who's going to have the guts to actually jump out there with Frank? And I think a couple guys that are talking about it right now are Matt Merrill, Joey Coulter, and also Hal Martin. They said if that 44 keeps on chugging on the outside, let's see if we can jump up there with him. Because honestly, nobody in that top five right now is going to beat the 41 car without jumping to the outside, grabbing it onto that gas, and going for broke. Starting to get some players on the outside now behind Kimmel. Yeah, Frank's made some ground up here. He, now he's side by side with Chris Buescher in the 17. Now he e eases ahead of him. Now pulls Hal up Martin. beside Hal Martin, going after Joey Coulter. Look at that draft with Chad now McCombie. we're seeing two cars hook up. And watch it now. Watch him go. Kimmel and Chad McCombie trying to make it work. The two-car draft. A big run by Frank Kimmel as he's closing in on the top two. They worked on it yesterday. Frank Kimmel, Chad McCombie. Those were two of the only drivers to work on that pushing 
situation. Now the problem is they hadn't worked on it long enough. Frank Kimmel needs to realize that sometimes he needs to ride the brakes so that they stay together. Two cars will run faster if they're locked together than if they spread out like they just did. And here, Frank Kimmel's going to get hung out. McCombie goes high. He has help behind him, and McCombie's going to try to go to the front. He had a push from Matt Merrill, and just, it just shot him by Frank Kimmel. But look at the gap now from Chad McCombie back to Matt Merrill. So that's going to stall Chad McCombie out again. They were side by side for second. Brandon McReynolds holding on to the bottom line. Oh, oh problem! problem. getting turned. Hal Martin goes to the inside. He'll slide back up the racetrack. Luckily, no cars down there as he came through. And the caution will come out. That was going into turn number one. That's what happens when you start bump drafting. And you start fighting for the inside of the racetrack. You see the steering wheel vibrate. I think Hal Martin has a, at least one flat tire more than likely. Did a nice job keeping that car out of the outside wall though. Third caution comes out. We know now we have 50 laps to go in this race. Everybody could certainly make it to the end from here. See if you can watch it now. Watch, watch the yellow car. He's back behind the purple car. He runs into the back of the 16 of Joey Coulter. And when the 16 comes back to get back in line, he actually made contact again with Hal Martin and turned him sideways. And around goes Hal Martin. There's another look. Watch the Busher 55. Watch the 55 now. Busher's overheating a bit. You can see the steam yeah. coming out of the 17. They were all tight, just, just trying to run run against each other. And that's all it took was just a little bit of a nudge from behind and around Hal Martin goes. There's another view. That's Chris Busher, the 17, right behind him. See the red car. When the 16 car gets pushed and gets a little bit sideways, when he comes back down to the yellow line, he makes contact with the 55. And then I think Chris Busher made a little bit of contact with the 55 of Hal Martin from behind. It looks like Coulter had to check up maybe to catch that car, as you had mentioned. And Hal Martin, in turn, that accordion effect, also trying to check up. The 17 gets into the back of him. And around goes Hal. We'll ride along with him. You, you, could, you could hear the contact from behind with Chris Busher. We saw the contact with Joey Coulter from the front out our onboard camera, and you could hear the contact from behind by Chris Busher. Mm. What a wild ride. 17's on pit road, 55's also down there, Bob. Yeah, and John Quinn, the crew chief for Venerini Motorsports on this 55, just told Hollywood Armstrong right there, the tire changer on the right front, pull that right front fender out, but don't give it a big yank. We just want to make sure it's clear of the tire. So a little doctoring of the right front fender for Hal Martin. That right front tire was down. It'll be a four-tire stop for Hal, but they're making sure that they don't do any more damage than has already been done to this 55 machine, Ray. Bob, the uh, 41 of Ty Dillon is going to stay on the racetrack. They have decided they're not quite ready to pit for this thing, but there has been a good bit of talk on the radio about learning about bump drafting here. The four of Brandon McReynolds is going to work with the 41, and they're going to start out on the straightaways and do a little bump drafting. They have come to realize after seeing Kimmel and McCombie go to the front like that, that to win this thing, you're going to have to start using the bumper. RC just came on and said these bumpers don't line up perfectly, so be extra extra careful but watch for that four and 31 to begin experimenting as we go back to green folks at home you're going to see a little bump drafting education bump drafting 101 is going to take place right in front of you so you won't want to turn the channel the reason we're under caution is someone got into the back of hal martin and into the front of hal martin wild ride for the 55 that brought out our third caution Saw a few on pit road to get fueled, maybe go the distance. Let's take a look at our Messina Wildlife mid-race recap. Ty Dillon brought the field to the green flag to get this one underway. Lap number nine, Brenton Beef Freeback has an issue with a three car. Has some suspension damage to the left front of that car. No caution until Terry Jones brings out the first caution when his engine expires in a plume of smoke. See lap number 24, Ty Dillon regains the lead after pitting from Dakota Armstrong in the 22. 
Dakota had stayed on the racetrack. Our second caution came out when James Hilton got into the wall. Did a lot of damage to the right side of his car. On pit road, you see Pierre Bork pull in to his pit, actually about three pits too early. Tom Hesert leaving his pit makes some pretty significant contact. You see the repairs to Tom Hesert's car. Most recent caution comes out when Hal Martin has a wild ride going into turn number one. Joey Coulter in front of him, Chris Buescher behind him. Contact made, and around goes Hal Martin. Ty Dillon out in front of this field at the halfway point. We've had three lead changes. Ty Dillon battled back on the racetrack to take the lead. Three cautions for 13 laps, and only two cars out of the race. The Aaron's Lucky Dog goes to the 11 of Richard Harriman. He will get a, a lap back, courtesy of Aaron's. So Ty Dillon, Brandon McReynolds running one and two. Big day tomorrow here on Speed. NASCAR race day will get it underway, then we'll move over to Fox for the Sprint Cup Series race from the high bakes here at Talladega. NASCAR Victory Lane will wrap it all up at 7 o'clock Eastern right here on Speed, your motorsports authority. Right now, four of our top five, Ty Dillon, Brandon McReynolds, Tim George, and Bobby Gerhardt, all pitted lap back on lap number 17. Now, I have to believe the, the fact that they didn't come down pit road on this most recent caution, I have to believe that they may be thinking they may be able to go all the way with the amount of caution laps that we've had. I think it will probably take some more caution laps to do it, but uh, I'm not sure. Ray is, is, the, is the two of um, 41 of Ty Dillon thinking about coming down pit road later? Well, they've got differing strategies, Phil, and a lot of it happens with what they're going to learn here about bump drafting. They still need 16 or 17 more laps of caution to be able to make it all the way after pitting the first time on lap 17, but right now they want to learn about this bump drafting but Mike Dillon just came on the radio and said, I think we may have to abandon our original strategy. Come still get tires, because I believe our car and the four together are good enough to run back up through the pack. Bob? We saw Frank Kimmel do the bump draft with Chad McCombie, and the thing was, we all thought that Frank Kimmel needed to trail break a little bit to stay with that one car, but I just spoke to crew chief Bill Kimmel, and what he told me is the one and the 44, as Phil Parsons noted, worked on this yesterday, but they're still very uncomfortable in the corners here at Talladega. So when the 32 jumped out there as well, McCombie actually lifted just a little bit because the car started to wiggle, as did Frank. So right now they're trying to perf perfect it, but look for Kimmel to hook up with that one car once again. You know, I was talking to Frank yesterday about that, and he said the problem is, he said, it's fine down the straightaways. He said, but you absolutely don't know where you are. You cannot see through the back glass and then through the windshield of the car in front of you. So he said it's very, very uncomfortable when you get to the corner, and you really don't even know where the corner is. Very blindly heading into the turns. Benny Chastain right there, the 75 car. There's Hal Martin. Obviously, his steering wheel not... Uh, not vibrating, so no more flat tires for him. What a wild ride, though, in turn number one. Chris Buescher in the 17, currently running in the 12th spot. Joey Coulter, the Ripper energy, energy Drink, right now running in the 18th spot after making a pit stop. Pierre Bork running 17th. So Ty Dillon once again is bringing the field to the green flag. Things are changing now. Green flag flies. We'll see if we have the two-car draft take off now that Frank Kimmel and Chad McCombie have shown it works. And don't think that every one of these spotters and every one of these crew chiefs is aware of what went on there. They saw that. We only had it for a lap or two, but everyone's aware of it and talking about it. Three cars break away from the pack on the restart, and they're three wide behind them. So the three cars, Ty Dillon, Brandon McReynolds, and Tim George Jr. trying to work together. And then the pack behind them. Got Chad McCombie, the one car leading that pack. Bobby Gerhardt, the five. There's Frank Kimmel. Between Bobby Gerhardt and Frank Kimmel, remember, 43 previous starts here at Talladega. 25 for Gerhardt, 18 
for Frank Kimmel. Scott Lagasse now right behind Frank Kimmel. Sorting it out now, Dakota Armstrong in that 22. Just in front of Brian Silas in the 98, dropping back a spot. Sean Core in the 82. Matt Merrill jumps to his outside. Matt's in the 32 car for Wintron Racing. He's going to dive in behind now, Sean Corey. He realized that he wasn't he wasn't going anywhere on the outside. Single car against single car. We're still seeing eight to ten feet separating these cars. Not bumper to bumper. Well, I don't think we're done seeing the bumper to bumper <laughs> thing. When will it happen and who will decide to try to move out of line to take that top spot? You see right now, been dominant. right now Scott Lagasse, the 25 car, right very, very close to the 44 Frank Kimmel. The problem is he can't push him right there because all he'll do is push him into Bobby Gerhardt. They have to have some clean racetrack to make that work because you get so much momentum. There again, Scott Lagasse Jr. trying to get on the back bumper that 44. Here comes Frank Kimmel. Let's see if this two-car draft works. And I think it's going to work. I don't think Frank had any choice. If Scott Legacy was going to push him, he, he was going to run into Bobby Gerhardt. Now they make the move through one and two, that outside line, making the run, trying to get by Dillon. We'll see if McReynolds closes up on the back bumper of Ty Dillon, and that two-car draft will work. Scott Legacy trying to get to Frank Kimmel's back bumper, and when he gets there, then they're going to have some momentum. Ray Dunlap. Hey guys, you were talking about the 32 of Matt Merrill. They pitted on lap 46 here, put right side tires on, and they are good to go. And they believe this lead pack is going to pit yet in this race. So they're looking for a little strategy, and I wouldn't believe it, wouldn't doubt it, I say, if the 32 and the 12 get hooked together. There goes Kimmel. Does he have the lead at the start-finish line? He did. He took the lead away from Ty Dillon, but can he complete the pass? That's the question now. He can if he wants it. He can pull down in front of Ty Dillon, and he does for a moment. That's going to hang out Scott Legacy, who got him to the front. So Kimmel moves back up in front of Legacy to try to bring him along. And that is so key. If you have somebody that works with you, don't hang him out. Yes, Frank could have jumped in front of Ty Dillon and had the lead, but hey, I'm not going to. I'm not going to abandon the guy that got me here. How about enough. Brett Hudson right now running third? <laughs> Brett Hudson follows along, and it's Kimmel out in front. Now of Scott Legacy and Brett Hudson. See, now I think that the RCR guys and, and uh, Scott Nassett, the crew chief, they have to re-examine the fact that they stayed on the racetrack now. Obviously, they know that this bump drafting is going to work, and, and so they, I think they really should have taken that opportunity to get down pit road and get that fuel so they know they had enough fuel to get to the end. That would be the guarantee to make it to the end. Now there's still a question mark with those teams. Bob. You know, guys, here's something to consider. While a lot of these guys in the ARCA series do not know how to do this two-car draft and are learning by the minute and second out there, remember, their spotters know a lot more. And Frank Kimmel's spotter for this race is Tony Hirschman, Jr. He's the spotter for A.J. Amendinger, And you should hear him on the radio right now. Rick, he's trying to steal your job. He's like a play-by-play -play announcer telling Kimmel exactly what's going on behind him and how Legacy is trying to hook up with him. So remember that. These guys in the ARCA series learning how to do this two-car dance. Well, the spotters already know how, and they're helping these drivers. Well, as far as my job, to coin a phrase, look what's on the track, get in line. <laughs> There's a lot of them lined up right now. Out in front, it's Frank Kimmel in that 44, Scott Legacy. Now, Bob mentioned a lot of experience as far as spotting. Scott Legacy has T.J. Majors who is spotting for him, who spots for Dale Jr. on Sundays. Red Hudson gets shoved out of the way. He wasn't quite right next to the yellow line there. He left about half a, half a car width, and they, those guys seize that opportunity. Ty Dillon gets by him. It's going to bring Brandon McReynolds with him, and now he's, he's stuck in the middle. Clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right. Here I am, stuck, stuck in, in the, the middle, middle of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness, here we go. Things are heating up as we pass the halfway point. Just 40 laps to go. Now 39 as the pack goes by. The start-finish line and into turn number one. Frank Kimmel and Scott Legacy did the two-car draft to get out in front of Ty Dillon. Dillon now back up to the third spot. Red Hudson is now 14th after running third on that last lap. So Kimmel, can he get to victory lane once again here at Talladega? Stay with us.
NASCAR Race Hub Monday through Thursday. Make sure to tune in. Steve Burns gives you all the insight as to what's taking place in the NASCAR world. On Tuesday, a big announcement. The 25 nominees for the NASCAR Hall of Fame will be announced on NASCAR Race Hub. Mike Joy and myself will walk you through that. Kyle Petty will be at the Hall of Fame to talk about those nominees. I want to make sure to tune in to NASCAR Race Hub. See the leaders having to make their way around a slow car, lap car on the inside of the racetrack. They're able to do that. I'm telling you, every lap that we run under green is making people like Billy Gerhardt and Scott Nassett all worrying now about whether they're going to have enough fuel and when they're going to have to stop. See Ty Dillon looking to the outside of that 25 of Scott Legacy Jr. And already we've got guys talking from pit box to pit box. Yeah, that's Ty Dillon's team and, and Brandon McReynolds' team already talking now about what to do. Ty makes his way to the outside of Legacy for just a moment, then pulls back to the inside. Tim George Jr. in the fifth spot in that number 31, then Sean Corr in the 82, just behind him. Again, this pack working the bottom oh, of the race. Oh, track. Oh, we had a right front tire, looks like it went out. Brian That's the 98 Silas. of Brian Silas. A hard right turn for Brian Silas coming through, turns three and four. He goes down onto the apron. Still no caution. Silas on pit road and down pit road goes Bobby Gerhardt in the five, trying to avoid that 98. So Bobby Gerhardt was slowing to avoid, had to go down pit road, and was doing it at about 180 miles an hour. Brian Silas was coming off the wall, trying to make his way to pit road, and Bobby Gerhardt at the last second dove to the inside of him to avoid hitting him. Silas was running in the seventh spot when that problem happened with his race car and got up into the wall. No caution comes out. I know the ARCA racing officials deem that Bobby Garrett was just taking an evasive move to uh, avoid Brian Silas, so I don't think any penalty there. But the problem with that is I think it may have cost Bobby Gerhardt the draft. It definitely did cost Bobby Gerhardt the draft. He's now he's being shown about six or seven seconds behind. I think, take a look at this one. Once again, that 98 of Brian Silas run just off the track, and then, yeah, the right front went yeah, you out. Could you could see the fender. The you, yeah, you could already, already. And now the caution comes out. They're saying debris on the racetrack, and I think Billy Gerhardt was lobbying for that because he thought that there might be debris after this incident happened. Anytime you have that kind of contact like that, that I think you're going to have some debris. So I think it's a good move by the ARCA racing officials to bring that caution in. There's Billy Gerhardt right there, crew chief and brother. Take a look at this. There's Bobby Gerhardt going down pit road at speed. That, that, is, <laughs> that, that really shows you how fast these cars are going when they're when they're down there next to people standing on pit wall there staying right behind pit wall there's billy gerhardt saying wait a minute why, why aren't we seeing the caution that's what that's what he's wanting is a caution it it really gets the heart rate up when you're standing about 20 feet away from a car going <laughs> Almost 200 miles an hour, 180 miles an hour down pit road. There you see Brian Silas out of his race car. Disappointed, I'm sure. Pit road will remain closed because that car of Brian Silas is, is parked on pit road right now. And now that we've seen the two-car tandem able to make their way past the pack, we would expect to see the Ty Dillons and the Bobby Gerhards making their way on. I think they all have to come. I don't think we've had enough caution laps to ensure that those guys can go that far. Again, they pit back on lap number 80, on lap number 17. So I don't think there's any way that they could make it to the end without coming down pit road right now. A lot of damage to that race car. Running seventh when he got into the wall there. You see the Lucas number five. Bobby Gerhardt back there. Barry Fitzgerald once again grabs the Aaron's lucky dog and will get a lap back in that number 14. You know, we've got a couple guys down there on pit road. 
And Ray, you were standing there. What did that look like when Bobby Gerhardt flew by you? Oh, my, Rick, I'm trying to get my breath back. I saw that caution. When the car went up into the wall, I thought for sure there'd be a caution. So I ran up to get on the wall. And just as I started to turn to the right to look, Gerhardt went by me in a flash, knocked me out off the wall. It was, uh, it was interesting. I didn't know he was coming, but it was sure a wake-up call. <laughs> That's amazing right there. And we've seen that before. We've seen that before at, at these super speedways. I remember Carl Edwards in a Camping World Truck Series race had to avoid an incident. He went down uh, pit road and ended up winning that race, I believe, at Daytona. Sure, sure so maybe that's a good thing for Bobby Gerhardt. And you remember, not oh so long ago, we had no pit road speed. Right. I mean, that's how guys would come off the racetrack off turn four. If they were pitted down towards turn one, that's about the speed they would come off the racetrack making a green flag pit stop. So dangerous, and thank goodness that they have put the pit road speed into place to try to avoid any incidents. So Kimmel out in front, Legacy. Scott Legacy running in the second spot. Ty Dillon is third. McReynolds and Tim George Jr. They're your top five here at Talladega Super Speedway. It's the Arca Racing Series 250 on speed. This Friday, the Music City will be rocked as Todd Bodine, Ron Hornaday, Timothy Peters, and the rest of the world's toughest truckers battle on the concrete. Don't miss the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series from Nashville. That's next Friday, 7.30 Eastern, live on speed. Motorsports Authority. Johnny Sauter, our most recent winner in the Camping World Truck Series. Big win coming at Martinsville. Bob Dillner. Hey guys, I had a very interesting conversation with Frank Kimmel's crew chief, Bill Kimmel, and of course, uh, th they're just a hoot to work with in the ARCA racing series. And I said, Bill, how close are you? I said, can you make it? He goes, I hope. I said, well, how close? He says, real close. I said, well, have you won in a while? He goes, no, we haven't. And that's why we're going to stay out there. We're real close. We don't know if we can make it, but we're sure going to try. That's a pretty big gamble. Their last victory came in 2008 at Salem. So it's been quite some time. That was win number 74 for Kimmel. He's still five behind Iggy Katona. And we're seeing Bobby Gerhardt make his way onto pit road now. That's about 130 miles an hour <laughs> slower. slower than the last time. You know, Frank Kimmel's worried about having enough fuel. He pitted on lap number 32. Ty Dillon, Brandon McReynolds, Tim George stayed on the racetrack. They pitted on lap number 17. Chad McCubby also on pit road now. Looking at the front end of that race car. They've got it full of fuel. And away he will go. Bobby Gerhardt now in his stall, right? Right side tires go on this Lucas Oil Chevrolet. They're going to go ahead and do four. They made a big wedge adjustment also. Four tires and fuel here. Gerhardt not going to have his same drafting partners when he goes back to the racetrack, but he said they knew they weren't going to be able to make it. He felt like tires and fuel may be the advantage. Pierre Bork also coming off the of pit road, that number six. 31 laps of racing to go here at Talladega Super Speedway of the 94. Again, this race scheduled to run yesterday afternoon, but because of the thunderstorms and tornado warnings, we have moved it to a Saturday morning race. Again, 30 laps to go here at Talladega. Welcome back, Arca Racing Series 250. It's the second race of the 2011 season out in front. Frank Kimmel looking for win number 75 for his career, closing in on Iggy Katona. Did, did a little math during that commercial break. These guys pitted on lap number 17 with enough caution laps. I think they may be in their window to make it. Ray, what do you think? I don't know, Phil. There's a lot of varying strategy down here. I mean, you remember Gerhardt pitted earlier at Daytona, and uh, today he comes in on lap 63, so very interesting for sure. Back up at the front of the field, you'll see the 41 who is running in third. At Daytona, he was running third on the racetrack, and a car in front of him was blowing oil, so he backed off and went to the back of the field. Ty Dillon just came on the radio and said, guys, you're not going to believe it, but the 25 car in front must be throwing oil again. My windshield is completely covered, so he's very concerned. They're going to try to get by that 25 as fast as they can. They think there might be some oil coming out of that thing. Bob? Well, go figure, Ray. I walked over to the Venerini Motorsports crew for the 25 of Scott Legacy and said, hey, 
are you leaking oil? And they said, absolutely not. We've had the spotter check out the rear end of the car, and Scott Lagasse doesn't smell anything. But then again, I asked Big Bill Benarini, the car owner for this team, and he said, you know what? If it was pouring out, I would tell you it's not. You know, usually it's a telltale sign on the back bumper. If, if, right. if something's leaking any fluid, just like we saw Tom, the front of Tom Hessert's car, that's the back bumper would look like that. And it looks like the 25 bumper is pretty clean right. on the back of that car. Here's Bill Venerini, ARCA Series champion. There's that Take back a bumper. Closer here. look at it. There's a little oil back there. A little bit of stuff. But you see it on the left, that's the overflow from the gas. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's not a great deal there. Sometimes it would be completely black if there was a lot of uh, fluid coming out. But there's no doubt that there's something getting on Ty, Ty Dillon's windshield, though. So as we come to the start-finish line, we'll have 29 laps of racing remaining. Kimmel out in front of Scott Lagasse Jr., the question mark on that 25. If it is having some fluid coming out of it, Ty Dillon runs behind him in third. Brandon McReynolds, Tim George Jr., your top five. Sean Core, Grant Infinger, Tom Hazard, Hal Martin, Chris Buescher are your top ten. Rob Jones in the 28, Benny Chastain. Wayne Peterson, Brent Brevek all scored laps down to this field. I think Brent Brevek back on the racetrack in the three as they're coming to the green flag. I think those three drivers that pitted on a lap number 17 have gambled that they were going to get enough caution laps. We've had 18 since lap 17 when they pitted. That may be enough. Green flag comes back out the field across the stripe, again led by Frank Kimmel. Brent Brevek 11 laps down to the field on the inside. And they spread out behind as they go into turn number one. See Chad McCombie right up against the outside wall. You see Ty Dillon. He tries to get to the outside of the 25. He's bringing Brandon McReynolds with him. Ty Dillon trying to make the pass now on Frank Kimmel. Brandon McReynolds trying to go with him. What a restart for Ty Dillon as he clears that 44. But will he hang out Brandon McReynolds? He's going to stay right up on the outside so Brandon McReynolds can draft off him. Now Lagasse needs to get against Frank Kimmel's rear bumper if he can. Tim George Jr. also following that line. There goes Ty Dillon. Drops to the inside. Now Brandon McReynolds and Tim George Jr. hung out to dry on the outside. Ty's going to pull up a little bit to help Brandon McReynolds. What a great job these young drivers have done this race. Dillon back to the bottom of the racetrack, and now McReynolds just hanging on. Here goes Kimmel looking to the outside of that 41. Let's see if they start to do the two-car draft. Kimmel thought about it. He had a little bit of a run, had some momentum, thought about going to the outside, then thought better of it. See Chad McCombie, Brett Hudson hooked up on the outside, the very outside of the racetrack. And the 4 and the 31 continue to drop back. Dakota Armstrong now tacking to the back of that outside line. Here comes the 32 of Matt Merrill as well. Milka Duna. Duno in the 63. There's Larry McReynolds watching as his son tries to make that outside line work. You know, Larry McReynolds won here with Davey Allison back in 1992 when Brandon was just 11 months old. I bet you Larry's a lot more nervous right now than he was then. <laughs> I'm sure he is. A little wobble there as they work into one and two. Brandon has to rely on Tim George. Now look, Tim George got against him. And look at the momentum they gained. Brandon McReynolds with a run down the back stretch now. If they work together, they'll be faster than the pack. But they're still learning. They're learning as we go how to do this two-car tandem. You see, they break away when they get to the corner. If they could stay hooked up, then they would just drive around this inside line. They would check out on that inside line. But again, not a lot of practice doing that. And so a little hesitant. Now you see Dakota Armstrong making the move with Matt Merrill just behind him. And watch the momentum they get. Matt couldn't stay hooked up with him. That's the key is you have to stay hooked up. And Brandon McReynolds moved to the outside of Dakota or to in front of Dakota Armstrong to try to get a push from the 22. Pretty smart move by the young man. Absolutely. Wise beyond his years. So the inside line being led by Ty Dillon. Frank Kimmel running second. Legacy Jr. is third. Sean Core in the 82 scored fourth. The battle is for fifth. 
On the inside, that's Grant Enfinger in the 36. The outside is the four of Brandon McReynolds. Ray. Well, talking about uh, spotters up on the top, Lauren Rainier calling the shots for Brandon McReynolds today, talking him through this little bit of bump drafting. And Brandon just came on the radio and said, tell him to push me all the way around the track. I can hold the wheel. Let him come. We want to go to the front. Bob? Well, Ray, here is the problem when you push somebody, and it's something that Scott Legacy Jr. learned in that last green flag run. He pushed the 44 to the front, but the problem was that car started to overheat just a little bit. Scott said, I need some air to cool this thing off, and that's why right now they're lagging back just a little bit. They're trying to buy their time and push at the right time. And the push was made by Dakota Armstrong. We saw Brandon McReynolds fly by Ty Dillon to take the lead. And his dad was pretty happy about it. That's amazing, though, that all it takes is about a half a lap. Now we see Dakota Armstrong jump to the outside of Brandon McReynolds with help from Ty Dillon. And McReynolds is going to get hung out now as we see Ty Dillon go to the outside. Kimmel checks back to the inside. Legacy stays with Kimmel. In front of this field, it's Dakota Armstrong, but just for a moment. Now Kimmel goes to the outside. He'll battle for the lead. Hey, this is Talladega now. <laughs> now it's looking like Talladega. Legacy to second. In front, it's Dakota Armstrong. Kimmel on that outside line. Will they make the outside line work now? How about Bobby Gerhardt? He makes it three wide. He's going to try to pull up a side of Milka Duna. Look at the run Kimmel has. Got a push from Ty Dillon. Now Kimmel battling for the lead on the outside of Dakota Armstrong. Here comes Ty Dillon to get on the back bumper of that 44. And the outside line's moving now. Watch when Ty Dillon gets up against that bumper. Look at the momentum they gain. And away goes Kimmel. Two car link lead over second place Dakota Armstrong. Now he'll check back up. Will he get in front of the 22 or the 41? That's the question. I think he wanted to be in front of both of them. <laughs> He's got a long ways to go. 23 laps remaining in this one. Oh, oh trouble. Round Hal Martin. Hal Martin and into the wall. Martin hard into the inside wall. Caution comes out once again. Well, you knew that angle that Hal came off the racetrack, that he was going to make contact with that inside wall. Great to see him moving around in the car, though. Twice, Hal Martin has gone for a ride. This time, it will end his 2011 Talladega Super Speedway experience. An unfortunate for Hal Martin, but again, good news for the guys that pitted on lap number 17. Ty Dillon, Tim George Jr., and Brandon McReynolds wore caution laps. Safety crews get to Hal Martin. He was running 10 when he got sideways and into the inside wall. Bob? And apparently, according to Hal Martin and his spot of Mike Herman Jr., they said they got tagged by the 17. Now, the 17 and the 55 were trying to hook up and draft just moments ago, but their cars really weren't working well together. And then the 17 just ran into the back of the 55 gas. That happened the first time. Absolutely. Joey Coulter yep. was in front of him. The 17 was behind him. Let's take another look. Here we are right there. You see the 17 of Chris Buescher gets against his back bumper. And probably Hal Martin was hitting the brakes because he was against the front bumper or the back bumper of the car in front of him. We get another view right here. Well, that's all it takes. And look at that angle now. He's headed towards the inside wall. Had the, had the brakes locked up, that thing wouldn't turn, oh, but thank goodness, barriers. thank goodness for the <laughs> oh, safer barriers. It is great to see the give that that wall has, but still the damage done to that race car. The water out of the radiator. There's another look. He just got against, got against him, and it pushed him headed towards the outside wall. Then I think Hal probably corrected. And then, it, and then he was still against him and just shoved him to the inside. Right along with Hal Martin. This one's going to sound difficult. It's a sound you hate to hear wow. right there. Take a look at this real time. It happens fast. I mean, Hal never even had time to back off until that thing was headed towards the inside wall. 
17 of Chris Buescher that was right behind him. You can see the wear on the front of that race car, and it's just where it starts to angle back, which almost gives a lifting motion to the car in front of them. Could very well, because these cars aren't like the, the Sprint Cup cars. These cars aren't exactly alike, you know, in the, in the front ends. They'll put that car up on the rollback and take a look at the impact this wall takes. Flexes as the 55 slams into it on the back stretch. Hal Martin out of that race car. We're under caution once again. Kimmel out front. Coverage of the Arca Racing Series on Speed is brought to you by Messina Wildlife Management. Stop animal damage with Messina Wildlife Management. And by Aaron's. You don't need credit. All you need is Aaron's. It's a beautiful day here in Talladega for the Arca Racing Series 250. Quite a difference from when we tried to start this race yesterday at 4 o'clock when the thunderstorms came through. Now let's head to pit road and Ray Dunlap. Well, we talked about it being a learning experience here at Talladega. The last thing that uh, Ty said on the radio was, woohoo, this is fun. Yeah, he's finally getting to race a little bit. Uh, we led there for a long time, and now he gets to race a little bit. But uh, he's doing a heck of a good job. Uh, we kind of uh, made a pit strategy at the beginning of the race, and we're going to stick to it. Are so you all good on fuel now? We're all good. We're just we're making gas now. All right, Bob. They're talking about trying to hook up and get right back up there and win this thing. I'll tell you what. Frank Kimmel is having a lot of fun inside that 44 machine as well. And uh, the way he snaked his way up there through the lead, it looked like a different type of driver than Frank Kimmel, Bill. Well, it's the same type of driver. We just haven't seen that type of driver for probably four or five years, to be honest with you. Uh, pretty exciting for the team, too, because... Uh, you know, they work hard, and, and it's, it's neat to see the, the car actually competitive for a while. And, uh, you know, regardless of the outcome, you know, we've been competitive today, and it's pretty exciting. It's a, it's a, it'll be a big lift for the rest of the year for this team. You and the 25 work really well together, and I know they're talking about on the radio hooking up once again. Is that the plan? Absolutely. Um, you know, it's just a whole lot nicer to be up front. It looks like cleaner air is better. The only thing I don't like about it is it uses more fuel up there, and I'm still a little bit concerned about fuel. Uh-oh, still close for fuel for Frank Kimmel, guys. Well, he's got that 41 behind him, and I'm guessing that Ty Dillon would like to make some friends right now because he's led a lot of laps here, and I'm sure that if the field would get the chance, they may hang him out. I was listening to Billy O'Day, his spotter, and he said, hey, Ty, I think everyone behind you would just assume you'd be at the back. We better figure out how to work with that 44. Stay up front till the end. Green flag back in the air. 19 laps to go. Kimmel on over a two-year dry spell as far as getting to victory lane. Can that all change today? See Bobby Gerhardt lurking back there. Bobby's just outside the top 10 right now. And anyone that works together with one other car has the opportunity to make its way to the front. It's just who will try to do the two-car tandem. Very close up front. Ty Dillon all over the back bumper of that 44 of Kimmel. Now Dakota Armstrong all over the back bumper of the 41. Three-car push taking place as they go through three and four. Remember that 22 of Dakota Armstrong won this race last year in a wild finish. Now they spread back out through the trioval. See Tim George peeks to the outside back there running about the eighth position. He has Brandon McReynolds right behind him. They're talking about getting hooked together to try to make their way back towards the front. 18 laps remaining. Kimmel counting down those laps to potentially his 75th win in the Arca Racing Series. Ty Dillon finished the 2010 season strong, winning the last two races. Look at Tim George, Brandon McReynolds on the outside. Brandon's going to try to get to that bumper. You know, it's amazing. These guys pitted lot number 17. I never dreamed there'd be enough caution laps for them to get to the end. And we heard Scott Nassett just tell Ray, we're good to go. We're making fuel. We're making fuel. Well, I guess if you want to be green, you might as well make fuel here at the racetrack. Tim George Jr. still on the outside. Brandon McReynolds behind him. They Sean have to Cole get hooked the up. They have to get hooked together. Running in a draft on the outside is not going to do it. They have to be touching. And so the drafting 101 continues for these young drivers. 
But it's the veteran that's out front. Frank Kimmel in front of young Ty Dillon. Continuing to lead laps at Talladega Super Speedway. Second pack now has joined this first pack. Brandon jumps back to the inside. Tim George Jr. on the outside. Will he get hung out? I think Brandon tried it for a couple laps. They weren't gaining any ground, so he decided to jump back to the inside. Coming into this race, Frank Kimmel leads the all-time Arca Speedway or Super Speedway lap leaders. Coming in, he led 200 or 2,645 laps in 80 races, and he's adding to that number today. Chris Busher on the inside. You saw Tim George on the outside. There's Brandon McReynolds. They've reversed it. They have Brandon out front. Now Tim George behind. We'll see if Tim George will tuck onto the back bumper. See Chad McCombie right behind Tim George. We know Chad can do it and has done it in this race. See the shadows. You can see there's a big gap between those two cars. Now Chris Busher moves up. Not wanting to get left out. It's all about timing. When you come to Talladega, you've got to move in front of the right car at the right time or get hooked up at the right time to make your passes. This is the Talladega we've known and loved for over 40 years now. Grant Enfiger jumps to the outside to get in front of Chris Busher. Now the three wide. Now Brandon McReynolds to the inside. Will he try to get behind that 17 of Busher? He's in front of him now. It's Grant Enfiger that he'll try to tuck in behind. Meanwhile, the guys up front staying in line and at the bottom of the racetrack. No one looking out in the top five cars. Dakota Armstrong now moves to the outside of Ty Dillon. Ty Dillon holding on to that second spot. Dakota Armstrong trying to get help from Matt Merrill in the 32. Did not have enough help to make it work. Grant Infinger in the 36 in front of the four of Brandon McReynolds on the outside line. But again, they're not bumper to bumper. So it's not rocketing them to the front as we've seen two-car tandems do. Brandon McReynolds peeked to the outside for a moment of Grant Enfinger looking to maybe make it three wide. Now Grant Enfinger jumps to the outside of Matt Merrill. 14 laps remaining. Kimmel and Ty Dillon. Two cars out in front. Three wide behind them. Dakota Armstrong. Stuck in the country, middle. Country right in the middle. Here comes Grant Enfinger on the outside. A lonely spot for Dakota Armstrong as Dakota will fall back. Grant Enfinger with the run on the outside. He's got Brandon McReynolds working behind him. He will battle for the lead as they go through three and four. If Brandon could get just a little bit closer, but sometimes you're, you're flat on the floor and you can't get any closer. And it moves back. Kimmel, Dillon on the inside. Infinger moves to the outside, trying to take second away from Dillon as the strife. It's Infinger in second, Dillon in third. McReynolds fourth, Legacy is fifth. Ray Dunlap. The way the plan is set up here, Rick, is for the four to get behind the 41 once they get an opening. Watch him abandon that number 36 out there and dive to the bottom and get with the 41. They believe that's their best chance for the four to push the 41 past that 44. How about that push right there? Brandon McReynolds makes the move, gets right up behind the 36 of Enfinger, and they go to the front. Enfinger leading at Talladega. It took about five seconds of being hooked up for those guys to drive to the front. They shot past the 44, and around goes the 31 of Tim George Jr. Right across the nose of Frank Kimmel. Back up the racetrack goes Tim George Jr., and the caution comes out. It looked like Tim tried to get in line. He didn't have quite enough room. Frank was there. And it's a one-car incident. How about that for Tim George Jr.? Right Slides. in the middle of that lead pack, and it's a one-car incident. Slides back up the racetrack, but no one near enough. And so everyone avoids. Tim George Jr. keeps it going. He'll See how much damage Frank Kimmel has from that incident. You, quite a bit of damage to the right, right front. front corner of that Menards Ford. Now, the good thing for Kimmel he has to realize that if they come to pit road and they've got someone they can draft with, potentially the 31 who has to come to pit road, they can work their way back up to the front if they have that two-car tandem. Take another look at what just happened. See, Tim George is on the outside. He's going to try to get down in 
front of the 44, behind the four. He just didn't quite have him cleared. He wasn't there. Frank held his ground. I don't think Frank, I don't think he had time to even slam on the brakes and let him in if he'd have wanted to. And if he would have, the accordion effect, he probably would have got run into the back of and got spun around, and then we would have had a big one. So probably the right thing for Frank Kimmel to do. Here's another view of it. Now watch. The 31's going to try to come down to the inside behind the four. You see Frank's right front corner is up almost to the back of the rear tire. Frank does a nice job avoiding that grass. What an amazing job by Frank Kimmel there. A car sliding across the nose, and he's able to pretty much keep it at speed going through the trioval. Frank stays on the racetrack, does not come down pit road. Tim George Jr. making his way onto pit road. The only casualty it looks like was the cone to the entrance to pit road. Welcome back, Arca Racing Series 250 here on Speed, your motorsports authority. Out in front of this field, it's Grant Infinger. We're under our sixth caution. As we saw the 31 of Tim George Jr. go around, the Aaron's lucky dog is Brent Brevang in that number three. So he'll get one of his laps back. Had problems early on in this race and is 11 laps down to the field. That means there's 25 cars right now on the lead lap. Bob Dilder. A big debate right now on the radio for the team of Frank Kimmel. When they hit the 41 car, it did some damage to the right side of the nose where that nose meets up with the fender and right now they're trying to decide whether or not to come down pit road tony hirschman jr is the spotter i mentioned that before he says i think we're going to be okay and honestly bill kimmel and the boys down here just gave them a go ahead to stay out frank kimmel despite that damage will stay out in the racetrack yeah that's 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 great news for frank kimmel not to give up all that track position you can see there i'm just a little bit worried about the front edge of that fender rubbing on the tire but a lot of times that'll make its own clearance. You see that you want that fender out flush with the outside of the tire, and it's not now. It's it's inboard of that. Yeah, you would hate to see a right front tire cut down, especially at Talladega, where we've seen speeds of 185 plus miles an hour here today. And aerodynamics are so critical. You you want that fender as tight as you can get it. So that's why any any kind of nudge from anything like that gets a little bit too close. You can see Milka Duna. They're doing a little bit of work on her front. The front of her car, you can see the hood bloused up a little bit. So made a little contact out on the racetrack. Okaduna will go back out. In front, though, it's Grant Infinger. Brandon McReynolds running second. Now, we talk about dance partners. Who is going to work with who as we're under 10 laps of racing to go? And then maybe who's going to work with who on the last lap? Exactly. I mean, you don't want to make your move too early here because, I'm, you know, th that, that same thing that you do is available to everybody else. Larry McReynolds probably more nervous than he was back here in 1992 when Davey Allison went to victory oh. lane and we're seeing problems out of the four. He's wiggling. Could he be out of fuel? I guess he must be out of fuel. He's trying to wiggle it. Remember, last pitted on lap number 17. Ray just came on the radio, said the engine stopped, not running. Going to try to come to pits. The guys are up on the wall. They've got a fuel can. That was, that's got to be making the 41 and some other guys think a bit. He was running second. And fuel, the big question now, can he get around? He's stopping in turn three, just on the apron in turn number three. Remember, the fuel pickups are in the right rear corner of these cars. If Brandon had been run around on this 33 degree banking, that fuel will run away from that pickup. The thing actually could have fuel in it, but it ran away from the pickup and it can't pick it back up. And he's, it, you're, I'm sure his father will be telling him he needs to be running on the flat surface. Because as you mentioned, that pickup that pick is on the right side. He probably should have been down on the flat surface but he's going to get a little assistance going around. They're not going back to green yet, obviously with the safety vehicle out there behind the four. What a terrific job Brandon has done this entire race. Ran up front, pushed people to the front, got pushed to the front. Mm -hmm. He's going to get pushed around, but he will end up losing a lap. I believe it depends on if the safety vehicle will get him around and they'll 
top it off with fuel before the field gets back around. Let's take a look back, Rick, at, at what we were talking about. Brandon running up on the racetrack along with everybody else. You see that fuel pickup is way over in the right rear corner of that fuel cell because it's centrifugal force. But here at, at 70 miles an hour, that fuel's running away from that pickup. And I think that's what happened. That more than likely that car still has enough fuel in it, maybe even to get to the end. But the problem was he was on the bank and it ran out away from the pickup. And now he is on pit road. We're hearing that Hal Martin has been checked and released from the infield care center. I think that's something that Ty Dillon needs to be aware of. Obviously, he pitted the same time that the four did. Right. Guys, they have uh, put fuel in here. They're making a chassis adjustment, and they're spraying some ether in the front to try to get this thing. Brandon is turning it over. So far, no fire. They got fuel in now. It is fired up, so, well, stalled it back out. We'll see. You know, he's got it running, so the four is back running. Bob? You know, Ray, for so many years, we talked about the Alabama game. The Allisons, Neil Bonnet, Red Farmer, and the like here in Alabama, making a name for this state in the big leagues of racing. Well, today, your leader of this race, Grant, leader of this race, Grant Enfinger, just 26 years old, looking for a big victory here. He's won a lot of big super late model races, like the Rattler there in South Alabama Speedway. This would be a dream come true. Grant Enfinger leading the field. Chris Buescher just behind him now as they come through the trial. Well, green flag back in the air. We're underway. It'll be eight laps of racing to go. Grant Enfinger doesn't want to get too big a lead. That'll give those guys momentum. Look at Frank Kimmel dive to the outside of Buescher. Kimmel has Ty Dillon behind him. They're working together. That two-car tandem is going to go quickly to the front. Where will Grant Enfinger end up? Look at the momentum that the 44 is going to have. Their only choice Enfinger had was to block him. He tried to. It couldn't, didn't work. Disappointing for the four of Brandon McReynolds as all the excitement is taking place on the racetrack there on pit road. Kimmel back in front of the field. And Brandon McReynolds now just leaving pit road a lap and a half behind. And he'll have to come up to speed and will have no one to help draft with him. So Kimmel. Ty Dillon, one and two. Grant Enfinger now running third. Chris Buescher right behind him. There's Brett Hudson. Great run for him in the 94 car. Matt Merrill to his outside in the 32. Through the tri-oval they go. Coming back to the start-finish line. Just seven laps to go. Enfinger dives down behind the 41 of Ty Dillon. Matt Merrill now is leaving that outside pack. He has Dakota Armstrong behind him and Bobby Gearhart. They're side by side for fifth. That outside line making a run. You always have to worry about the five of Bobby Gearhart. If you think you're going to win this race, he is always in contention. Great call by Tony Hirschman Jr. and Bill Kimmel to leave that 44 on the racetrack. Coming out of turn four. This time, six laps of racing to go. Kimmel and Dillon, one and two. If Dakota Armstrong could get against that back bumper of the 32 of Matt Merrill, they could make a run at him. And you mentioned it's all about timing. Six laps to go. A lot of time still in this race. The inside line, still dominant. Until the two-car tandem works. Pierre Morgan, Morgan six. Behind the 16 of Joey Coulter. That's Chad Hockenbraw, the 58 on the inside. All these cars still on the lead lap. Bobby Gerhardt moves to the inside line now, trying to get by that two-car tandem that was in front of him. He will get past those two. That, now, hook, that hookup didn't work between the 32 and the 22. Gerhardt's going to need somebody to work with. Now, we're getting awful tied up front. Chris Bump Busher drafting. gets pushed out. Bump drafting taking place, and Busher shuffles out to the outside. How about Tommy Hessert after that damage on pit road? He's back in this fight. Tommy Hessert's been moved back up into the sixth position. Right behind Scott Legacy. Kimmel, Ty Dillon, Grant Enfinger. Hudson, Legacy, Busher, Hessert. But Will Vaught, we haven't talked a whole lot about him. He's up in the top 10 in that 51 car. Will Vaught just behind Tom Hessert. 
Ooh, Tom almost opened up the bottom of the racetrack there for just a moment. Less than five laps to go. When they cross the stripe this time, it'll be four to go. The strategy, who will you go with on the final lap? That'll be the big question, and how long do you stay with them? Now, the 94 gets into the 36. We'll try to give him a shove. Doesn't do any good to shove them down there. They have to be out of line to use that momentum. Bob Dillner, what's that 44 team thinking with just four laps to go? Well, not only are they worrying about fuel mileage right now, Frank Kimmel just came on the radio and said, I got a bad vibration, a bad vibration in the right front of that machine. Remember that contact with that 41 car. Right now, a big concern on Frank Kimmel's mind. About Grant Enfinger gets shoved to the outside, loses that third spot to Brett Hudson. And doesn't have any help behind him. So Enfinger now shuffling back. Out in front, Kimmel, Ty Dillon, three laps to go. Ray. Hudson Rang put Enfinger out. They pushed him up too tight, and Billy O'Day saw that. He said, if I see that 94 coming up to push on you, I'm going to let you know you're going to have to make a hard right to go around that 44. He said Hudson is really pushing strong, even sometimes in the corner. It's coming down to it. Only three laps to go. Could be the biggest moment of some of these drivers' lives right here. Winning at Talladega Super Speedway. Frank Kimmel's been to victory lane before. Ty Dillon, Brett Hudson, Scott Legacy Jr., Tom Hessert, Will Vaught. Bobby Gerhardt back in seventh. He's also been to victory lane. He's on the outside. He's trying to make that second line move. When they come to the stripe, it'll be two laps of racing to go. Can Kimmel hang on? When will Ty Dillon make his move? Legacy jumps to the outside in front of Gerhardt. Gerhardt, does he want to tuck in behind the 25? No, he moves to the outside. He'll hang out Scott Legacy Jr. Now, here comes Bobby Gerhardt, challenging for the lead on the outside. He had a push from Matt Merrill in the 32. Gerhardt, now with a big gap behind him, has no help. He's hung out on the outside. When will that second line catch up to him? And will they get behind him, or will he be hung out? He's trying to figure out who's going to emerge, the 17 or the 32. He wants the one with momentum. Still in front, Frank Kimmel behind him. Ty Dillon, the veteran, Bobby Gerhardt on the outside. Legacy hung out to dry in the middle. Coming down for one lap to go, coming down for the white. Through the tri-oval, side by side for the lead. Here comes Bobby Gerhardt to the outside. Who'll have the lead with one to go? Kimmel has it by one foot. One lap to go at Talladega. Ty Dillon hooked right up to the back of Kimmel. The ease away from the five of Gerhardt for now. Gaps between the top three, Kimmel. Less than half a lap to go to get back to victory lane in the ARCA Racing Series. Ty Dillon closing in now. Bobby Gerhardt still on the outside, trying to get a draft, trying to make it nine wins for his career. Ty Dillon looks to the outside. He's got to do something. It opens up the bottom for Hudson. Here they come out of turn number four. Kimmel. The closest to the start finish line. Dillon makes his move to the outside as they close in on the trioval. Does he have enough time? Here comes Kimmel through the trioval. Here comes Dillon at the stripe. It's Ty Dillon winning this one. How about that? He used the five car of Bobby Gerhardt for momentum. Ty Dillon times it out perfectly and just noses right Kimmel at the line. How about Bill Kimmel? So close. What a great job they did. They just were a victim at the end of the race there. Ty Dillon ran a masterful race today. Led most of the start of this race. And then just at the last moment makes the perfect pass on Frank Kimmel and gets his win. And he's a teenager. Unbelievable finish here in the ARCA Racing Series. Win number three for Ty Dillon. And Richard Childress Racing continues its dominance here at Talladega. Watch this now. Ty Dillon fake to the outside there. He sees Gerhard up there. He knows he's going to need a push to try to move behind him. You see him move out. Now he's going to try to get behind Gerhard to get that momentum. He leaves Frank by himself. Frank Kibble hung out. 
coming through the trioval and oh so close take a look at how close this is at the stripe. Look at those guys battling four wide behind them. Look at Brian Rose, the Matt 19 Merrill. jump to the outside. Matt Merrill, Legacy in the middle. Through the trioval, it's still Kimmel by half a car length. And then the surge right as they come to the stripe. And Ty Dillon beats Frank Kimmel by a half a car length. Great strategy by Scott Nassett and his entire bunch. They pitted on lap number 17. They made it all the way. Ray Dunlap. I'll tell you what, Phil, we are in pit stall number one, and the, the start finish line's only about 175 feet from here, and you looked at me and said, who won? I said, I have no idea. I know, I looked at you, and I'm like, who won? And you said you, and I was like, unbelievable. I tell you what, all the guys back at the shop, the body shop, engine shop, uh, fan shop, fab shop, body shop, everybody, I get to give a shout out. This car has been massaged since Daytona. It's all, all because of them. Ty Dillon, how about that? Okay, now we get away from super speedway racing and the rest of the schedule is ahead of for you. What's the plan? Well, we've been, uh, we've been busy at the shop and uh, I think we've got a good game plan for the season. Uh, Ty's pumped up. He's ready to get racing. All right, congratulations. Go enjoy victory lane. First victory of the season goes to Ty Dillon, and what an unbelievable finish, guys, at the strike. Look at the disappointment on the face of Frank Kimmel. Oh, so close to getting win number 75. Look at Bobby <laughs> Gerrard come up behind him, saying that that was a great race. Bobby Gerhardt had a lot to do with Ty Dillon winning that race. Gerhardt finished third. <laughs> and, and look at the excitement in front of him. What an amazing finish. Fred Hudson comes home in fourth. Chris Buescher was fifth. Unbelievable. Ty Dillon, the young man, back to victory lane. We'll hear from him in just a moment. Welcome back. Take a look at this finish. After 93 laps, the 94th decided by half a car length. Ty Dillon makes the last second move to the outside of Kimmel and grabs his third win. There are cars all over the racetrack. Look at Brian Rose up against the wall there. Four wide, he ends up with a seventh place finish. And Tom Hessert all the way down at the bottom of the racetrack. He's 60 feet away from him. <laughs> and Hessert with a sixth place finish. Look at how close that was. You don't think that was a happy young man there, do you? <laughs> Kimmel, just let one go. So close. Well, it's not that he really let it go. He, he just got beat. I don't think he did anything wrong. This kid's all smiles, though. Ray Dunlap. Down in victory lane, we're getting ready as Ty Dillon comes flying out of number 41. That is maybe the biggest Gatorade shower ever. Big hug from crew chief Scott Flash Nasid, and I want you to come over here, and I want to show you. Look at, look at this. This is what he was looking out, folks. Could you even see that you won that race? I couldn't see. I was glad when that caution came out that Frank got to get back in front because he's in that neon car, that Menards car looks so good. I could, I was the only one I could see. I could see that in the yellow line, and uh, I was just hoping that he was going the right way. And there at the end, uh, we pushed him out front. This synergy Chevrolet was fast, man. I, I can't thank these guys enough. Um, saw Gearheart out of my mirror coming real hard. Billy O, my spotter, I can't thank him enough. Can't thank my grandfather. Man, I can't believe it. I can't believe that just happened. I thought it was over coming, coming across where the start, final, start finish line should be. So I'm excited. I can't thank everybody enough. You ever seen anything like that? No, no, it looked like an Earnhardt move back in. <laughs> Congratulations, man. Back in 2000, Dale Earnhardt probably had the best finish I've ever seen. That one's a close second. Bob? Coulda, woulda, shoulda. Frank Kimmel, your thoughts. Oh, what just a disappointing. No, great day for us. The Anson Menards Fusion was really fast, and uh, we get that new Ford motor. I think we're going to have to really deal with this all day, but they, they had to deal with us all day anyway. And uh, got to thank Chad McCombie and uh, Scott Legacy. And uh, there at the end, Ty was helping a lot until he, he should have stayed behind me. <laughs> Did you make a mistake, Frank? Well, of course, I, uh, you know, yeah, I'd, I'll already live this one many times. Um, you know, I, I wanted to protect the bottom. That was a place to be for pretty much the whole day. And uh, when I got to the uh, coming off of four there I thought I had him because he gave me he pushed me in the lead Bobby had a good run there and nobody wants to see Gerhardt win you know so uh, I, I thought I had it you know I thought I was in good shape just uh, just didn't beat him back to line tough break and disappointment written all over Frank Kimmel's face thanks Bob next ARCA race on speed June 4th Chicagoland it was a great race we saw drafting 101 take place 
Guys getting to the front, but in the end, it was a perfect textbook move by the driver of the 41. Young Ty Dillon goes to victory lane.